Him. You are the Lord, you change not. The only one who rules in the affairs of men. There is no one like you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. We celebrate you, Lord. Lift you above all names. We adore you, Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you for all our works today. Thank you for favor in all ramifications. We are grateful, Lord. We want to thank you for each one of our children everywhere they are. We want to thank you for members of our families scattered across the world. We want to thank you for all our friends, all our church members, all our partners, all the people supporting us in what we do for you. We ask that your kindness rest upon everyone. We forbid evil concerning us and all our people. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. We give you all the glory. There is somebody who has a right here impediment. The Lord is dealing with that problem. Put your hand there now. I break the power of that affliction. In the name of Jesus. And I command total healing there. That oozing is over. That noise is over. That pain is over. In the name of Jesus. There is somebody in your dream. Every time somebody is pursuing you. And then when you wake up, you see blood. You see blood in your nose. Yes, somebody pursue you in your dream. And, you know, you wake up, you see blood in your nasal cavity. Blood coming out of your nose. It's not a new thing. It's been happening to you for long. I'll have you just put your right hand on your forehead now, that person. I break the power of that affliction. I cut off the power of that devil. Get out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. We give you all the glory. And I pray, Lord, that you open our understanding to your word. Impart our destinies. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can be better than that. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Please sit down in the presence of God. I want to welcome you to church this evening. I know that God is here with us. And I know that God would prosper you. God, we bless you. Today I want to continue my discussion, my teaching on choice making, decision making, choice making, whatever you call it. And I think this should be part uh, seven now. Choice making number seven. And I've Call this one other major traps to avoid. Other major traps to avoid. Let's read um, some scriptures. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. And I'll read from verse 16. Galatians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 16. He said, I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. 
so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Let's read one more scriptures. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I start to read from verse 5. Romans chapter 8. I'll start to read from verse 5. It says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, they set their mind on the things of the Spirit. But to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. For if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Pay attention to that last verse again. That verse 14 again. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. Now for a number of weeks now, we have discussed on choice making for a number of messages, let me put it that way. And I try to teach you basic truths on how to make your choices in life. I took the pain to explain to you that choice making is probably more important than any other subject because it cuts across every sector of our life. It is a practical part of life. It's not, it's not more of theory is more of practical because it, there are things that concern you specifically there are things that you respond to and there are things that affect everybody now the conclusion of this series is divine direction that is uh, how to hear the voice of God and things like that that's the final destination we are going and we will get there very soon uh, but we have not reached that yet I've been doing more of preambles giving you background information because I have discovered that uh, the subject of direction is a big subject it, it spans so many aspects 
Somebody asked me, how do you hear the voice of God? He's asking me, how do I hear the voice of God? That's a difficult question to answer for me. Because I have been working with God for 40 years, 41 years or so. And uh, I've been going through several processes. I've gone through so many experiences. So it's easier for me to hear some things. Because I've had it before. I've, I've made mistakes in hearing the voice of God. I've, you know, so it's easier for me to recognize what God is saying to me now than when I first gave my life to Jesus Christ. So somebody who just started hearing the voice of God cannot easily compare himself or herself to myself. It's just like you have been in a relationship with somebody for years. You get used to him. You get to know his ways. You get to recognize his voice. If I probably call you on phone and you are somebody who knows me very well, the moment you pick the phone, even though I hide my name, even though I hide my number, even if I pretend to be somebody else, there are some of you that can easily recognize me. Say, ah, stop pretending. I know even the way you are breathing, I know you are the one. That is relationship over a period of time. Meanwhile, there are other people you will speak to. Even the, somebody called me today. There's a church I'm supposed to minister. And they, they call me up. Hello, sir. We are about to put out our jingle and we want to be sure we got your name correctly. Please, can you call the name for us yourself? <laughs> they, need to, they need me to tell them how to pronounce my name. Do I tell you to pronounce my name? You have heard it. You know the name so much. That is what I'm trying to say is that there's a dimension of relationship that you need to develop that makes communication easy. The same thing when you are relating with God. All right. So, but there are so many preambles that we need to pay attention to of things that we must sort before you will begin to talk of the real act of hearing the voice of God. Alright? But like I was trying to tell you in the last message, God is very interested in what you are doing and is involved. But he is not going to be the one to tell you what to do in most cases. Uh, today I'm looking at traps that people often fall into as they try to take decisions. Traps that people often fall into. Maybe believers, Christians, churchgoers, and so on. Traps that we often fall into in the process of hearing the voice of God. And I'm telling you so that you will learn not to fall into those traps. It's easy to fall into some traps as you begin to focus on hearing the voice of God. These traps I'm talking about, they are some of the reasons why a number of believers don't even want to find out the will of God also. Because they have seen some people who fell into traps in the process of hearing the voice of God. So they say, ah, those things, that thing is a dangerous thing. You want to hear the voice of God? Ah! Ah, don't do it all. Just do your thing normally and stop trying to hear the voice. Because their hands have been burnt in the process of hearing the voice of, of God. I will come to those points very soon. So today I'm focusing on traps that people often fall to in the bead of hearing the voice of God. Earlier I spoke about factors that affect us in choice making and I listed issues like background, circumstances, vision, emotions and so on. These ones these factors could also be seen as traps to avoid in choice making. That's why I am using the topic other factors, other major traps to avoid today. Other major traps. So I called my topic choice making part seven other major traps in choice making. Other major traps to avoid. Look, I think you got it. In essence, therefore, in this message, I'll be listing a number of traps that many are falling into in the process of choice-making. 
in the process of decision taking so that you can watch out against them. Number one, the trap of laziness. The trap of laziness. I'm sure you know these are just my own points. I just call them by the way I can explain it. And I leave you to go and uh, shred it the way you want, to label it the way you want. But I have called the trap of uh, laziness. And this plays out in many ways. This laziness plays out in many ways. For instance, some people will choose not to do anything. They won't ever make a decision. They say they are waiting for God to speak. They forget that indecision is a big problem on its own. They claim to be waiting for direction. And they are waiting forever. Like you see some young men who ought to be married. Eh? And they are waiting for direction. They are just waiting. They are just waiting. And you tell them, they say, I'm still praying. It's waiting for direction. Whereas, he's just a lazy man. It's waiting forever. Now, God has given you a sound mind. I have explained that. Sound mind to study the word of God and reason some things out by yourself. For instance, if you just study the word of God, 80% of the process of the choice of your spouse is done. If you study the word of God, just by studying the word of God, 80% of the process of the choice of your spouse is done. For instance, by studying the word of God, you will know that your spouse should be a believer like you. Is that not in the Bible? Clearly spelled out. That already settles 50% of the choice making. You know the person must be a believer. Unless you are silly and deceiving yourself. You know some people, we, we will still come to that later. But people like to deceive themselves. Alright? But the, if you want to be a genuine child of God and you study the word of God and you want to follow the word of God, you 50% of the choice making is done. You already know that the person must be a believer. He said we should not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And if you are foolish enough to go and yoke yourself with an unbeliever, that's your headache. That's a choice that you make. But you are breaking scriptures. By reading scriptures also, you will know that he or she should not be chosen by beauty, by height, by wealth. Those are not the virtues you are looking for when you are choosing a spouse. How do we know that? Just by reading scriptures. Just by reading scriptures. So, the moment that is sorted also, another 30% of your spouse choice is settled. So, you are not looking for figure 8 or figure 9 or figure 10 or a rich man or something. No, you are not looking for all of that. That's not, that shouldn't be what you are focusing on. The Bible already tells you all of that. But some people are lazy. They will not study scriptures. And so they are confused. They don't even know what to do. And they, they do trial and error all over the place. So that's the first dimension of laziness that I'm talking about. The trap of laziness. Another dimension to this trap of laziness is bulk passing. Or transferring of responsibility. You transfer your, your, your responsibility to another person. Huh? For instance... Almost every day, I receive messages from people who are, that is, when I say every day, almost every day, the days I'm in town. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you know, my days are three days in town. I come on Saturday, go back Monday. Within those days, that's when I say almost every day, those days. <laughs> or even when I'm doing crusade and I'm in town, I receive messages from people who are lazy. 
some people like I'm not saying everybody will call me a lazy. I'm not saying everybody will send message to me. I'm saying that I receive from lazy people. People who want someone else to pray their prayer for them. I call them lazy people. They won't pray. You can I, I can you you want to pray. You have an issue you want to pray about, and you expect one prophet somewhere, one man of God somewhere that will pray the prayer for you. And pastors, some, some funny ministers have turned themselves into prayer merchants. And they say, don't worry, just send the money. We are going to pray. <laughs> send milk. Huh? And you send this one, you send that one. We are going to pray. And uh, they collect all the money from you. And the... Collect the money. They just collect the money. And nothing, nothing happened. Then you say pastors are fake. Pastors that are fake, that are fake. It is true that it's, it's. You want someone else to pray your prayer for you. Deliver me, O oh God. From technical. I was doing fine before you came. Okay, oh, praise the Lord. Let's pray one moment for them, Technica. Sata bilaku shata bilia sataya. Grace, <laughs> grace, clear perception. Receive in Jesus' name. Okay, let's go on. So I said another dimension. So this trap of laziness is both passing or transferring of responsibility. People who expect you to pray their prayers for them. Not only their prayers, they want you to tell them what to do. Because they are not ready or they are too lazy to wait on God themselves. Now, any minister who claims to be praying your prayers for you is deceiving you. Is deceiving you. Don't be lazy. Take time and to God by yourself. He is your father. Tell them to bring my microphone back. He is your Father. God is your father. So, talk to your father. And it is not difficult to talk to God. It's not. If it's difficult, that means you are doing something silly. Eh? You know, when I, when I was smaller, they taught us to pray. You must put your hand together. You must kneel down. You must... And so it looks difficult. They make it so cumbersome. Nalayo. When you want to talk to God, you can talk to God when you are standing. You can talk to God while you are walking. You can talk to God while you are lying down, while you are sleeping. There is no time you cannot talk to God. There is no way you cannot talk to God. God is spirit. And they that will worship him, will worship him in spirit and in truth. You don't need to kneel down before you talk to God. You don't need to get to any mountain before you talk to God. The reason why we go to mountain is because you have quietness there. You have some dimension of privacy there. Thank you. The reason why we go to mountain is because the place is quiet. Not that our God is God of mountains. Oh, so one man is on the mountain. Because he's on the mountain, he can pray better. Uh -oh. Thank God for him. He's praying. I respect them. I live in a mountain also. Okay? So I respect myself also. <laughs> but just as I can talk to God, you too can talk to God. Just tell him what you want. So what I'm saying is that God is your father. It's not difficult to talk to him. 
Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying a minister cannot join you to pray. They can join you to pray. But don't delegate your prayer to them. Don't delegate your prayer to anybody. How can you trust somebody enough to say he's praying your prayer for you? Who give, what gives you an impression that he's praying? And if he is praying, what gives you an impression that he's praying for you? All because he said he's praying for you. That's just a cliche that he has developed over time. He said, ah, my dear, I am praying for you. He is just, most of them, it is that moment, whatever he says, that moment, that is the prayer for you. What I'm saying is, don't delegate your prayer. Do you know that even ministers, we fall into, some of ministers fall into that error. They delegate their prayers, their prayer responsibility to a praying squad, and they go to bed. And you assume that prayer squad is praying. Whereas praying squad, some of them are fighting each other there. Some of them, they are, don't let me criticize so that it won't look like I'm criticizing praying squad. Praying squad is wonderful. There are many people who are praying. But what I'm saying is don't delegate. Don't trust people enough and leave off your prayer by yourself. Pray. Pray. Do you know that some ministers also wait for prophets to lead them in their ministry? I pity you. You are being lazy. I finished a meeting in UK some years ago. And someone called me up. I had already arrived back in Nigeria. Someone called me up. Wanting me to tell him whether or not he should relocate to Canada. He is in the UK. And he's thinking maybe he should go to Canada. And he now called me in Nigeria. To ask me should he go to Canada. Should he go to Canada. Man of God. I should tell him. Whether you should go to Canada. Imagine. You are about to take a very crucial decision of your life. A decision that will affect your entire family. A, a decision that will affect your entire generation. The generations yet unborn. And you want a man who is not affected in any way. And I don't have any stake in that decision. I don't have any stake. I don't have anything to lose. And he's asking me to take that decision for him. Ah, ah. Because you are looking for divine cancer. You don't, I don't, don't trust people that much. Don't commit your life into people's hands like that. Thank God at that time I had much time. So I spent several hours with him on phone. Joining him in the process of taking the decision. Asking him questions. Telling him to fast. Telling him to pray. I told him how to hear the voice of God. Over the phone, I spent several hours with him. But nowadays, I don't have that time for anybody. I just ignore such messages and calls. Don't be lazy, please. Seek God by yourself. Stay at it until he speaks to you. That is the way to hear the voice of God. Every serious person does it. Every serious person will seek the face of God. The Bible says, true desire, a man, having separated himself, seek it and intermediate with all wisdom. There must be a strong desire. There must be an aggression in your spirit that makes you to want to know and you seek after God. Seek after wisdom. And then he will speak to you. It's a serious business. And it is not for lazy people. So that's the first point. The trap of laziness. If you want to hear the voice of God, you must not be lazy. Number two. Trap of deception. Now the devil is very interested in your life. And he wants to push you in the wrong direction. And he knows that you are committed to direction. So he knows that that is one area where he should try to get you. So he will try various 
attempts to get you through direction. How do I mean? Through dreams and revelations. Whether you are the one dreaming or somebody else had a dream. He will send dreams to you. He will send revelations to you. It's either you are the one dreaming or somebody close to you, somebody who can tell you, who have a strange dream that is sent from hell, not from God. Or through prophecies. Meant to deceive you. Meant to lead you in a wrong direction. Away from the program of God for you. In essence, what I'm trying to say is that not every dream or vision or prophecy is from God. Hello? Are you still with me? Not every dream, not every vision, not every prophecy is from God. And if you remember, if in 1 Kings chapter 13, we read about that young prophet who was sent to Jeroboam in uh, Samaria. He went there to prophesy. Was this Samaria of, of Bethel? He went there to prophesy to Jeremiah. I mean, to, to, to what's his name now? Jeroboam. The Bible said, an older prophet followed him and deceived him. Told him an angel spoke to him to come and bring him back to eat in that town. Whereas God had spoken to him before. And the Bible put it there that he lied. No angel spoke to him. So even since that time, at that time, prophets have been lying. Even at that time. So what gives you the impression that all the prophets you are meeting today are telling you the truth? Even in the Bible, prophets told lie. You say, ah, man of God, I've spoken. Okay. You fall for the trap of deception. So sometimes the deception can come through somebody else. But it can also come to you directly. Trap of deception. And you think it's God that is speaking to you. A young man saw his dead father in his dream several times. And the father was always telling him about who killed him. He'll tell you, so so and so person killed me. And instructed him to go and avenge. You must not let him have peace. You must avenge me. Avenge me. He said he had been dreaming and his father had been telling him, avenge me, avenge me. Is that not a terrible trap? How do you avenge death? Huh? You are supposed to go and kill the person also. Uh -huh. And when you kill the person, what will happen to you? That will be the end of the matter. Okay. Huh? Police will arrest you. You go to jail or you... It's either they kill you or they put you in life in jail. Because you avenge your father. And then you will be seeing your father plenty in hell. Or in the prison yard, your father will be appearing to you. Thank you, my son. <laughs> you have done well. <laughs> or oh, what? Traps. They come. Some of them come through dreams. They come through revelations. I'm not saying that boy didn't see the dream. I'm telling you that it is a trap from hell for him. <laughs> that was meant to destroy him. Or you keep on having a dream that a married man like myself will be your husband. Don't worry about the one seeing ghost of his father. Let's talk about what you are seeing. And you dream a young lady, a man that is married because he has a fine car. You just find yourself dreaming that he is your husband. A married man. As soon as you see it, what do you say yourself? Pass over me in Jesus' name. It's a trap that the enemy set for you. 
I'm no longer, I'm, I'm, I'm not a small boy, so I know what I'm talking about. We have seen people who will be there and they will be organizing praying God for his wife to die so that they can take over. Because he had been, she has been seeing vision that that man is her husband. Which man? He's a trap oh, meant to destroy you. Uh, don't, don't allow it. Traps. Later, uh, well, I think that's the reason why the Bible said we should judge all spirits. Because all manner of spirits have come into the world. There are plenty of spirits in the world. And they operate in various ways. Now, the Bible even, Jesus specifically said, by their fruits we know them. And when he was saying that, he was referring to prophets. But prophets operate by prophetic, I mean spirits. By their fruits we know them. When a spirit is telling you that you're going to marry somebody who is married, you should know that that one is not God. There are traps like that. Sometimes later, we would, I, will, I will still be still in this series. I will teach you on dreams, visions, and prophecies. And I will explain how to judge them also. Because judging them is as crucial as knowing about them. If you don't know how to judge it, dreams, then dreams are useless to you. Because the devil will trap you there. Alright, so let me go to number three. Trap of self-deceit. Trap of self-deceit. Now this is a follow-up follow up on the last point. The only difference is that this deceit now is not from the devil, but from yourself. You are the one deceiving yourself. Now, strange enough, some of us are so used to self-deceit that we don't even recognize it any longer. We don't even know that it's, you are deceiving yourself any longer because you are so used to it. For instance, have you seen someone claiming to be praying and sleeping through the night on their knees? He will kneel down beside the bed. He said, tonight I'm going to pray. And he will kneel down like this by the bed and sleep from night to morning on the knee. And then he will wake up and say, thank you Lord for answer prayer. Thank you Jesus. And he will just get up. And he will be telling you he's praying. They are used to it. It has become a normal part of their life. I've seen several people who will, who will, who will come, who will say they are going for VG. And they will come for a, a meeting like this. They call it VG. And he will just sleep throughout the beach. People at home will say he went to VG. They say, and he doesn't miss it, but he's coming to sleep throughout. And then he comes home and says, Ah, thank God we had a great time in Viji today. Self deceit. People like that, you have, it, it has become a normal part of you. So you don't even know the difference again between times when you are deceiving yourself and when things are genuine. People claim. That God spoke to them, whereas there was no conversation between them and God. Nothing. God didn't tell you anything. And you are claiming that God spoke to you. Because you brought that same attitude into your decision making. I will understand why you'll be deceiving another person. Of course, I'm not saying that that one is good though. But I understand why you would deceive another person. Maybe you want to make an impression or something. But when it comes to you deceiving yourself, I don't understand. Why would you be deceiving yourself? It's a serious matter. You see some young men proposing marriage to several ladies. The same man. He proposed to seven ladies. And he told all of them that God said he should marry them. Seven. God told you to marry seven of them. Are you, are you Solomon? Huh? Did, Solomon didn't even say God told him to marry them. You should, you should, you should stop deceiving yourself. 
You should have just told those ladies that I think I like you. <laughs> I, I will understand if you tell seven people, you, seven ladies, you like them. Okay? You can, there's a possibility to, to like more than one. Because Solomon is your elder brother. At least he likes 1,000 women. So, no problem. Many families, the foundation of trust has broken down because of such deceits where man will come and tell the wife or the wife will tell the husband that God said something. On the same matter, you have said God said this. Tomorrow you have said another one. Another day you say another one. Another day you say another one. And God is the one saying all these things. Ah, ah. So, Niko Boko Bolo Lorone. He said this last year. He said this this year. And there is no coherence between all of them. God is not like that. It would have been better for you to say, I am confused about this matter. Just tell your wife, I'm still confused, but I'm thinking maybe we should do this. She will respect you more than for you to say, God said this. And then when you fall into a ditch, you say, ah, you know, I, I think God is saying that again. Ah, 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 ah. Are you saying your God is, is uh, confused? It is you that is confused. Be straightforward. Stop deceiving yourself. <laughs>